A lot of times you must have heard this term rupee appreciation and rupee depreciation or you must have heard it this way that rupee has become stronger or weaker against some currency. Usually it is in comparison with the American dollar. So in this video what I intend to do is make you understand what it means and how it affects the economy. You must have got a notification through a news app on your mobile or you must have read it in the newspaper that rupee has become stronger or weaker or crashed or gained some points against the American dollar. All of this simply means that the value of rupee has either increased or decreased against the American dollar. I'll quickly show you an example. As of today, 23rd January 2018, one US dollar is equal to 63.81 Indian rupees. Suppose you read the headlines of a newspaper that says, Rupee has depreciated or it has lost some points. That means rupee has become less valuable with respect to the dollar. If one dollar is equal to 63.81 Indian rupees, now let's assume the Indian rupee depreciated or crashed by 30 paise. That means 63.81 plus 0 0.30. Notice I have added and not subtracted. That will give us 64.11. Now if we have to import some goods, then we will have to pay more in terms of Indian rupees to match it with the price of a good which is in dollars. So when it says depreciated, the number actually goes up for rupees. In other words, as an Indian, we have to spend more to buy a dollar. Hence it is a loss for us. Similarly, if you see a headline that says rupee has appreciated or it has gained some points, that means rupee has become more valuable or stronger with respect to the dollar. Taking the similar numbers, if one dollar is equal to 63.81 Indian rupees, now let's assume the Indian rupee appreciated or gained 30 paise, that means 63.81 minus 0 0.30. Here I have subtracted and not added. This will give us 63.51 rupees. Now if we have to import some goods, then we will have to pay less in terms of Indian rupees to match it with the dollar amount of a good. So when it says appreciated, the number actually goes down for rupees. In other words, as an Indian, we have to spend less to buy a dollar. Hence, it is a profit for us. Now I'll tell you how this entire transaction is important for the economy. So when we import goods, we have to first buy the dollars and then the goods. So if dollars are expensive, to import goods, we will have to pay more in rupees. So that naturally makes the imports expensive. I hope you're understanding the direct correlation. Now let's go to the supply and demand side. When foreigners want to purchase Indian equity shares and bonds, when I say purchase equity shares and bonds, I mean the FDI, foreign direct investment, and FII, foreign institution investor. To invest, they need Indian rupees. Suppose you are a foreigner and you go to the foreign exchange markets and you say, I want to invest in India, so I need Indian rupees. And then you're given some number. They say this is the current value of Indian rupee. And then you buy these rupees with the help of your own currency, which we are assuming to be American dollars. And one thing you need to understand is that as an investor, you would like to invest only when the value of Indian rupee is less. Suppose if $1 is equal to 63.81 Indian rupees, as a foreigner, you would like to invest when $1 will be equal to 63.51 rupees. Because as a foreigner, in fewer dollars, you are getting more of Indian rupees. So it is a profit for foreigners. Now as foreigners purchase more of Indian equity shares and bonds, you see they are also creating demand for the rupee. When the demand for the rupee increases, it also increases its value. Now try to look at it from the other side. As an Indian, if a foreigner invests in India only when the Indian rupee is less for them, then it is good for India because we are going to get more dollars, our foreign reserve will increase. We can import more if we have more foreign reserve. Just to simplify this concept, if $1 is equal to 50 rupees, then in 100 rupees we get $2. And if $1 is equal to 63.81 rupees, then in 100 rupees we will get $1.5, which is less than $2. So if a foreigner invests in India only when the Indian rupees is less for them, then it is good for India because we are getting more dollars. Hence, we can also say that with an increase in demand for Indian rupees, the rupee appreciates against the dollar, making the rupee more valuable and stronger. 
Now, try not to get confused when I say this. When the Indian rupee appreciates or gains some points, then foreign direct investment increases. And FDIs are usually in the form of purchase of government bonds and corporate bonds. And the money coming from the FDI is usually used by the government to invest in infrastructure and achieving economic growth. So what we can learn from this is, when a country's currency appreciates or becomes stronger, then it drives more foreign investment. Now, inflow of capital from foreign investment is always good, right? Because a country will have more money for creating infrastructure and grow the economy. So this is all good, but there's another side to it. If rupee appreciates or becomes more valuable and stronger, then of course imports will become cheaper. Moments back we saw when the value of $1 is equal to 63.81 rupees and by appreciate we meant as an Indian, we will have to pay less in terms of Indian rupees to match it with the dollar amount of a good. So always remember when rupee appreciates, imports increases because we will have more dollar to spend. However, it hurts the exports. If we take the previous example, you see the value of rupee after appreciating was 63.51 rupees, which is lesser than 63.81 rupees. That means exporters will earn lower revenue and that will discourage exporters to export goods. Now, if a country is importing more than what it is exporting, that will create a current account deficit. So you see, on one hand, if the rupee appreciates or becomes stronger, foreign investment increases and on the other hand, export decreases. Now, as a government, you will have to balance and see what is important to export more and increase India's foreign exchange reserve or to attract more foreign investment, which will also increase India's foreign exchange reserve. And right now we see that India is too hungry for foreign capital, which is why it is damaging India's exports. I'll give you a very good example of this. You see, a lot of foreign car manufacturers are targeting the Indian market in tapping the growing consumer class. So this is a form of FDI. And on the other hand, the Indian textile industry is the clear loser because their exports are drastically going down. The Indian textile industry is India's largest employer after agriculture, but represents only about 1% of the nation's economy. So now the question is, as a government, should we focus on foreign investors who cater the needs of the consumers which develops the consumer economy? Or should we decrease the competitiveness of the textiles industry leaving millions of people potentially unemployed? Now I'll tell you why the government chose to attract foreign investors over reforming export policies. So if the exports are not increasing, definitely it will increase India's current account deficit. Right now India's current account deficit is really high. I mean, if you remember the 1991 balance of payment crisis, that was also due to misbalance between import and export. Since then, it is just rising. But if you look at the inflow of capital through foreign investment, that inflow pushes the country's annual growth rate far more than the revenue through exports. That means the deficit created due to inadequate export will be covered by the profit earned through foreign investments. And then ideally the government plans to use those profit to support infrastructure, employment and other welfare programs. So this is why the government of India is more inclined towards attracting foreign investors rather than reforming India's exports. Now, what did the GST do, the goods and service tax? It took out the money from the economy and that created a huge demand for Indian rupee. Suppose if there was no GST in an absolute normal condition, when there is no money in hand, Consumers usually cut down on their spending because you'll have to realize that not everywhere you could do payments with card and digitization came along recently. It wasn't 100% developed. Anyways, if there is less money in hand, that means the demand for the local currency increases. This is similar to the situation where if RBI decides to increase the interest rate, that will result in less borrowing, which will reduce the money supply in the economy and increase demand for money. I hope you're getting the relevance. Usually RBI increases the interest rate to control money supply in the economy. GST did the same thing. It reduced the circulation of money in the economy. So it is almost similar condition if you see. Now one important thing that you must keep in mind here is that when interest rate is high, that attracts foreign investment because the foreign investors find it very lucrative if the interest rate of any country's currency is high. So we can conclude by saying that high interest rate leads to increase in foreign investment. That means high interest rate 
appreciates or increases the value of rupee, which will then help us in increasing our foreign reserve. Now the same is not true when interest rates are low. When RBI reduces interest rates, then people borrow more money. That means people have more money in their hand to spend or in other words, they have more disposable income. And if you have more money in your hand, then prices of goods and services increases and that leads to inflation. So to control inflation, RBI increases the interest rate. So that means the value of rupee depreciates or reduces when interest rate is low. And if the value of rupee depreciates, then foreign investors do not find it lucrative to invest. And that reduces the inflow of foreign capital. So we can conclude by saying that inflation decreases the value of rupee and doesn't help us in increasing our foreign reserve. So next time when you see whether the Indian rupee appreciated or depreciated, you know what to make of it. I hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.